Okay, welcome back. In this session, we're going to be learning the rack and pinion mate. The nice thing about the rack and pinion mate it allows you to mate something that is linear with a gear. Okay, so for example, I got these two gears over here. Now, one's a linear gear. You can see the teeth are flat onto a, a block, and then this one has the gears on a circular gear like a regular gear would. Okay, so now I need this to rotate about this. Now I got this uh, block right here, and if I take it and I go back and forth, you're going to see that there is no relationship. There's no mates between that block and the gear itself. Okay, I'm going to put it back to where it was. And uh, now we need to create a, a mate that will allow me to, when I, whenever I move this block or the gear, allows the other to move as well. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to come over here under the mate. Oops, clicked on linear component. Click on mate, come down here, and open up mechanical mates. And scroll up until you see your rack pinion. And then scroll up again to you see the mate selection box. Now you're going to have to select a rack and then the pinion and the gear. The rack is going to be usually either a flat surface or an edge. For example, let's pick this down, this edge right here. The pinion slash gear will be the gear itself over here, which you can either select this edge or this edge or this edge because they all show a radius. So let's go ahead and just select the cylinder inside the cylinder of the gear. That's the easiest, usually it's the easiest part for me to select. Now that I have those selected, come down here until you see the pinion pitch diameter. Now if I move these flags around here so you can see them a little bit better and then zoom in, you're going to see that the pinion pitch diameter, you can change it either over here by double clicking on it, or you can select outside and then come back over here. If you change this to rack travel, you're going to notice that it changes to rack travel per revolutions. Okay, so the pinion pitch diameter will usually be the diameter of the entire gear. Okay, so that I know is about two inches. Let's go ahead and leave it at two inches. For the rack travel slash revolutions, usually, for example, if you have a 1032 gear, then you would do a 10 or 1 divided by 32, and that would be your answer over here for the rack travel over revolutions. Okay. So let's go ahead for the pinion pitch diameter, leave it at 2, and go ahead and click on OK to accept it. Now zoom in and take this gear, this uh, linear gear, and then scroll it back and forth. And you're going to see that your gear moves according to the gear at the bottom. Okay? And you can see, you can also move the top gear as well, but you can see that it's made it in such a way where it moves both of them. Unless you put it to the front view, then you're able to easily move it back and forth. You can see that it doesn't quite move according to the uh, linear uh, gear that you have down here. That's because you've made it this as the uh, the gear, I mean, and then this as the edge for the gear. So that means only when you move this gear will the gear move. The gear is only going to move according to it and it's made it in such a way where they stay together if you try to move the gear, but if you move the rack itself is the only time you're going to move the gear uh, itself for it. Okay, so that's a really nice advantage in the rack and pinion. And if I put this back into isometric view, let's go back to the rack and pinion mate and click on the reverse option. The reverse option, I'm going to click on accept to see it. If you can see now it's spinning in the opposite direction, the gear. Now that does not make sense. Obviously, it's not going to be able to spin in the opposite direction, but you're still able to simulate it. Now remember, this is a simulation. That means if I scroll down here while I'm moving this, you're going to see that the gears intersect with the other gears. That's because this is not a physical dynamics option. If you need to do this uh, real simulation, you need to do a physical dynamics option. You need to use the physical dynamics option in SolidWorks to do a real simulation. Okay? And that's how you use the rack and pinion mate.